Body Break with Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod. Imagine a TV antenna flying 21 kilometers in the air and staying aloft for months at a time. It would be able to serve an area of almost 200,000 square kilometers in the most remote regions of the country. A group of Canadian scientists in the early 1980s thought this was a great idea and developed SHARP, a stationary high-altitude relay platform, Canada's alternative to communication satellites. The Communication Research Centre of Canada, or CRC, played a large role in the early exploration and exploitation of space. They launched the Alouette and Isis satellites that vastly improved our understanding of the ionosphere. The CRC was also involved with early communication satellites with their Hermes satellite program. This groundbreaking satellite achieved the world's first direct-to-home satellite broadcast, and somewhat fittingly, it was a Stanley Cup Finals hockey game, the Habs versus the Bruins. However, the tremendous impact of communication satellites was not evenly distributed. Northern communities in particular had little coverage from existing geostationary satellites. Providing satellite coverage to these regions would require an expensive constellations of satellites in lower, more eccentric orbits. A more cost-effective, suborbital solution was needed. The range of radio towers are limited to line of sight. This means that radio transmissions can only reach as far out as the horizon. To increase the range, radio towers are built as tall as possible. Satellites in geostationary orbit can be thought of as being on a very, very tall tower. This allows them to reach the largest area possible, theoretically almost 50% of the Earth at one time. An intermediate solution was sought, and the CRC began looking into the idea of using an airborne platform to accomplish this task. The challenge was to create something that could reach high altitudes and remain airborne for long periods of time. The CRC settled on an ambitious project that called for an aircraft to fly at altitudes in excess of 20 kilometers and have an endurance of several months. Such a platform would have many potential uses. On the civilian side, it could act as a low-cost broadcast television and radio transmitter, a mobile phone relay, and aid in search and rescue. On the military side, such a persistent high-altitude platform would be perfect for coastal monitoring, or act as an early warning radar with a detection range far outside ground-based radar stations. It would also have the benefit of being able to detect low-flying targets due to its high vantage point. The planned six-month flights would allow the system to be easily maintained and upgraded, as compared with inaccessible orbital satellites. This would create a more dynamic and adaptable system with similar capabilities. The economical system was projected to cost $30 million per aircraft and ground power station, very competitive compared to the $130 million cost to build and launch a satellite. These prices would make it accessible to provincial governments and entrepreneurs. The critical piece of technology required for the project was a way to power an aircraft designed to stay aloft for such a long time. Carrying enough fuel on board the plane was simply impractical. Solar panels with batteries were heavy and wouldn't produce and store enough power to run the engine and transmitter at night. The solution was found when researchers, led by Joe Schlesack and John Martin, began looking into microwave transmission and induction. Power would come from the ground and be beamed up to the plane to power the engine, flight systems, and payload. This scheme would necessitate an all-electric plane. This was no problem as brushless motors were coming into widespread use and the required power output and efficiency was available. The system worked by covering the underside of the aircraft with microwave-absorbing rectennas. The term rectenna, or rectifying antenna, comes from a combination of the receiver antenna and DC rectifier that make it up. T-shaped copper wires and diodes absorb the microwave light emitted from the ground and convert it into an alternating current. This is subsequently converted to a DC current to power the onboard systems. An additional reflective layer was placed on the top side of the surfaces to reflect what is left of the beam back into the rectennas, further increasing power absorption. 
an array of transmitters on the ground would focus the microwave energy onto the aircraft. The term stationary in the SHARP acronym is a misnomer. The aircraft would in fact be moving in cycles within a 2km cylindrical region of airspace and fighting wind speeds up to 200 km per hour. The beam would have to be adjusted throughout the flight path and so a steerable system was needed. A single large steerable antenna was not practical and so an array of smaller dishes was preferred. At the time, electronically steered phased array antennas were becoming more widespread, but the technology was still developing. The team ultimately decided to use a combination of electrically and mechanically steered antennas. Beaming power through the atmosphere is not without risks. Microwaves induce motion in water molecules. This is the effect used in microwave ovens, but poses an obvious risk to wildlife and aircraft traveling through the beam. To mitigate the risk, the power of the beam was kept below a dangerous level to living organisms. Standing in front of the beam would result in an uncomfortable warming feeling, but would pose no further risk of injury. This limit on the power of the beam would shape the features of the final aircraft. Research into the feasibility of powering an airplane using ground-based microwaves began in 1981, when the CRC was joined by the University of Toronto's Institute for Aerospace Studies, and was led by Professor James Delorier. Between 1981 and 1985, they conducted paper studies into airframe design, rectenna design, experiments with microwave power technology, and studies into the feasibility of such an aircraft to fulfill its intended role. This included the development and construction of a 1.3 meter staggered wing model called Staggered Sharp in 1982. The proposal to build a working model and ground powering system was submitted, and work on the next generation of Sharp aircraft began. Since the amount of power induced by the rectennis is proportional to surface area, a way to increase the area was required. This led to the Sharp aircraft's most distinctive feature, the so-called pizza. This non-lifting surface acted as a rear stabilizer. In 1985, a full-scale aircraft proposal was put forward in a report to the CRC. Isis Sharp, named after the Egyptian god of the sky, was to be 17 meters long, have a wingspan of 36 meters, and a disc diameter of 4.5 meters. It was intended to fly at 22 kilometers altitude and carry a 100 kilogram payload. At these altitudes, it would need to reach speeds up to 200 kilometers per hour to maintain its position. The ground-based microwave transmitter would consist of a few hundred 15-foot mechanically steered antenna. The flight path of Isis Sharp was such that the antennas only needed to be able to turn by at most 20 degrees. A series of test model aircraft were created to further explore the idea. The first four Sharp models were presumably intended for airframe design refinements, wind tunnel testing, and flight tests under battery or gas-powered. The world's first successful flight of an unmanned aircraft powered by ground-based microwave power occurred on September 17, 1987. The UTS Sharp 5 took to the air under battery power until the transmitter was aligned. It then flew for 20 minutes under full ground-based power. By October they had extended flights to over an hour. It now resides on display at the Canadian Air and Space Museum in Toronto, Ontario. Sharp 6B was an improved version based more closely on the intended final concept. The wings were made parallel to the pizza and were covered in rectenna to increase surface area. Canards were installed to replace the T-tail stabilizer as it was found to be largely ineffective in its current position. It first flew in late 1987 and testing continued into 1988. The final proposal was for an aircraft with a wingspan of 39.6 meters and with a disc diameter of 9 meters. It was similar to the Isis Sharp proposal, but incorporated many of the design refinements learned during the model testing. It contained more than 10,000 rectenna and could carry a payload of 90 kilograms. The project ended when field mice broke into the hangar containing the Sharp models and damaged them beyond repair. The project was all but abandoned by 1989. A group of Japanese researchers picked up the baton and created their own microwave-powered aircraft in 1992 called Milax. Unlike the Canadian scheme, the Japanese used a fully-phased array transmitter. 
The success of the Sharp 5 and Sharp 6 models earned Professor James Delorier, and by extension his team, many awards, including the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale de Plomb d'Honneur trophy in 1988 for their pioneering work. The Sharp concept was a revolutionary idea that had the potential to change the lives of thousands of people working and living in remote communities all over the world. Unfortunately, it was competing against the ever-decreasing cost of satellites and the abundance of low-power repeater towers popping up all over the country. The infrastructure investment was seen as too expensive for its benefits, and 